The ability to dictate one's environment has always remained a luxury of the human species. However, the stasis of our creations has hindered our ability to adapt and evolve with our ever-changing environment. In order to enable a synchronization of our surroundings with that of our architecture, we must have re-evaluated both the means and matter of our creations. Natural rubber derived from the latex sap of the Helvetica tree. The metamorphic material is conceptualized as an extension of our own skin through an intertwined time-based relationship with its environment. Natural rubber is introduced as a material that offers us both material qualities of elasticity and biodegradability. Decay, developed through time, is an inevitable indispensability of creation, triggering a passing of occupancy transmogrification, embedding new life to be reborn anew. Tokyo, a city reborn, has undergone drastic growth in the last half century, constantly in a state of regenerating its landscape to cater to a surplus of inhabitants. This resulted in it becoming one of the most densely populated cities on Earth. However, the 32 million residents that occupy Greater Tokyo, it is estimated that only 10 million will remain at the turn of the next century due to a long period of population decline triggered by a nationwide decrease in fertility rates. These drastic alterations in the environment will effectively see a large majority of new bills either become derelict or completely repurposed in relation to the city's change in population density. The upcoming anticipation of Olympics in Tokyo, districts such as the Chula Ward are set to be as high-rise residential developments set to tackle the city's currently overstretched housing capacity. However, the forecast decline in population anticipates any current new builds and amplifying the effect of the surplus of buildings by 2100. New redevelopments associated with the Olympics ought to strive towards the alternative approaches to construction, whereby phasing and purpose of the allotted space is allocated in accordance with the time-based variance of the city. The first stage of construction proposes an extension of Hibiya Park, expanding on an infamously small amount of green space within Tokyo. The site's formation extends itself to form a direct cross-link between the Ginza district and the park. Space is divided through a formation of both horizontal and human occupied space and vertical veg occupancy. The site's garden state extends the duration of the Olympics to cater to what would have been a prominent increase in tourism. Once elapsed, the central region of the site is cordoned off 
construction, leaving the outer perimeter untouched for continual passage. Temporary use of a portion of the park is used during construction as a trade-off of public occupancy. The site's location next to the Urena Tokyo Line would be used as a central means of any construction based transport to the site. The cores are erected, followed by a gradual implementation of permanent steel-based structures in tangent with degradable natural rubber elements. Flats are then inserted, each with their own time-based occupancy. The material's degradation is initiated when it's directly exposed to UV light, whereby a deterioration of the material is triggered by subsequent oxidization. Layering allows for controlled mediation of the rate of decay. Pods located in the lower area are assigned a 30-year life cycle, since synced with the average lifespan of a Japanese house. Located closer to the ground, these parts are the first to transition to vegetal occupancy. Most outer flats contain a 50-year life cycle. The pods house occupational space such as bedrooms and living rooms, plus rooms that require significant electronics and fittings such as bathrooms and kitchens, are located in the long-term core of the building, which plug into temporary pods. Most inner located flats are assigned a 70-year lifespan as they would be the last to be directly exposed to UV light. Translucency of natural rubber allows diffused light penetration to particular localized areas without the degradation effects of exposed UV. The tactility of the newly formed build engages with the human form on multiple levels. the deformed to the immersed the adaptability of the material when driven by pneumatic inflation allows the external skin to become responsive to both its external and internal environment in regulating both airflow and light. Over time, as degradation occurs, the integrity of an exposed layer is compromised with so exposure to UV, triggering a second time frame of motion, decay. Prolonged exposure over a decade begins altering the surface condition of the facade. Fibers detach. Areas of tension tear. Surfaces blossom to the attraction of mass. to that of a vegetal inhabitation. As the most outer parts become subjected to its turn of degradation, enabled by the outer skin's disrevelment, the skin breaks away. New conditions of deployed geometry give way for new life affecting its altered habitat. Once any previously human occupied space has disheveled, the building structure is repurposed as a vertical farm catering to the new needs of the city in 2100. Food. The existing structures of build are repurposed rather than demolished. 
Vertical farms can produce up to 390 times more produce per square foot than typical farms, making them ideal retrofits for derelict or unused buildings. Through embracing a time-based decay as a design approach, we open up a potential discourse on the practical applications of the alteration and allocation of purpose to space in response to a change in the surrounding conditions. The transition is manifested through a gradual change of occupancy, from a human-inhabited anthropocentric architecture to a vegetable colonization of what remains. No, 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 no.